Hello, I'm Dr. John Iskander. Welcome to CDC Beyond the Data. I'm here today with Dr. Alan Mitchell, director of the Sloan Epidemiology Center at Boston University. Alan, today we heard uh, at the Grand Round session about advances in preventing birth defects. At a, both a public health and a societal level, what is the importance of birth defects and birth defect prevention? Well, first let's talk about birth defects themselves, which occur in about one in 33 pregnancies. So it's a fairly common uh, complication of pregnancy. And among the category of birth defects are a wide variety of specific birth defects. We think of congenital heart problems, we think of problems of the abdominal wall and so forth. Uh, but together, it uh, accounts for about 120,000 uh, babies born each year with a birth defect. And I think that over time, because birth defects have been with us for so many centuries, people have sort of come to think of them as an unavoidable consequence of being pregnant. When in fact, research has recently shown in the last maybe 30, 40, 50 years that some birth defects are actually avoidable. Uh, and that's where the research function comes in. So uh, moving from simply counting birth defects to making some advances in prevention, I know many of our uh, viewers uh, may have been familiar with the uh, what's often termed the thalidomide tragedy of the 1960s where uh, pregnant women taking uh, thalidomide had uh, babies with uh, often serious limb defects. Um, what have we learned through research since then uh, about prevention of birth defects and, and what are some of the gaps that remain? Well, that's a good question. The, the uh, thalidomide debacle in the 60s really, as you said, brought public attention to the problem. But in fact, uh, it was in the 1940s when we first learned that the placenta, which we used to think would protect the fetus from any kind of environmental problem, it turns out that uh, congenital rubella, or German measles, was identified in the 40s, and that was the first time something like an infection was shown to increase the risk of birth defects. The thalidomide example showed us that medications could also cross the, pl cross the placenta, and medications could also cause devastating birth defects in certain circumstances. So that really began the era of attention being focused on whether there were, in fact, other agents in the environment that might increase the risk of birth defects. And so by avoiding those agents, women could presumably reduce their risk of having a baby with a birth defect. So one of the things that, that you've studied through VAMPS, or the Vaccines and Medication in Pregnancy Surveillance System, is whether there might be um, medication or other, uh, other types of exposures uh, that could increase the risk of birth defects. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, what that system is, what its goals are, and what some of its findings have been so far? Sure. Uh, VAMPS was designed specifically, as you point out, uh, to examine the risks or relative safety of medications taken in pregnancy, and that includes vaccines. Uh, so our focus has been on the wide range of medications and vaccines, but a particular focus has been on uh, vaccines or medications that might be used in a public health emergency. And a good example of that was the 2009-2010 pandemic with the H1N1 virus. Uh, that was a situation where the government anticipated there would be a pandemic, and they asked uh, the VAMPS team to study the safety of the vaccines and the medications that might be used, the antiviral medications that might be used to prevent or treat influenza. Uh, some of our findings, which were available only months after the epidemic uh, was over, uh, revealed from the standpoint of birth defects that there was no increased risk for birth defects in general, uh, and the vaccine also didn't increase the risk of specific birth defects. Um, so I think that's a very important answer because it provided, you know, reassuring evidence of the um, safety of the uh, pandemic influenza vaccine uh, in pregnancy in a very uh, timely manner. Um, more broadly than just medications and vaccines, what are some other 
environmental exposures that we're now learning about that are associated with birth defects and particularly ones that might be controllable or preventable. And, and that's a very important focus is that it, certain uh, causes of birth defects and the vast majority are unknown and we'll talk more about that I hope but uh, there are certain causes which uh, by controlling the uh, causes we can reduce the risk of birth defects and a prominent among those are obesity which as everyone knows has increased fairly dramatically in the United States and pregestational diabetes or diabetes that's uh, present before pregnancy. Uh, that Those two factors along with smoking are known to increase the risk of birth defects. By controlling uh, obesity, by controlling blood sugar, uh, and certainly by reducing smoking, we can make substantial reductions in the number of children who are born with birth defects. So I think that's a very important perspective in that it, um, you know, we were earlier talking about uh, medications and their potential to increase risk for birth defects, but the underlying diseases themselves uh, if better controlled, uh, such as diabetes, may, may result in prevention of, of birth defects. So what are those, uh, those next frontiers in birth defects prevention? Well, it, it's interesting that uh, when I started out in this field, which was quite a while ago, the idea that some agent could actually reduce the risk of birth defects, we knew about infections, we knew about certain medications, but the idea that something simple might actually reduce the risk of birth defects was unheard of. But research, and again, research in the area of birth defects, identified about 30 years ago that a simple B vitamin, folic acid, could dramatically reduce the risk of spina bifida and other defects of the spinal cord called neural tube defects. And so we're hopeful that the horizon uh, for birth defects prevention includes both identifying other causes and, if we're lucky, identifying other factors which might, if taken, such as a B vitamin, reduce the risk of birth defects themselves. Thank you very much for being with us today, Alan. Please join us again next month for another episode of CDC's Beyond the Data. Beyond the Data.